Hello. Thank you for taking the time to watch this 10 minute overview of Operator 4, in which we hope we will show you how easy the product is to use and also how powerful it is for administrating an operating company. Let's start the application. After the splash screen, we get to see the dataset management window. This allows you to select from between multiple sets of data. You might have multiple sets if you're working with multiple vending companies or if you're keeping archive copies of one company. In this case, we've just got the one set of demonstration data. So let's open that. We're then asked to sign in. You can have passwords if you want to, for security. Just give me a moment to resize the screen for this video. That's better. What we're looking at now is the main Operator 4 screen. It's very clean, it's very simple. That's by design. We want the product to be easy to use. But don't be deceived, it's also very powerful. Let me take a couple of minutes to show you around. Very importantly, here on the left hand side, we have the tabs. The tabs are used to look at different aspects of Operator 4. This first tab, called Route, provides us with the list of routes that are set up. In this case, there are five routes we can see which van is allocated to each route. We can open up a route and we get to see the sites in that route. In Operator 4 a site is defined as a machine with a customer. So down here we can see there are three machines with Tico toys so there are three sites. If we click on any particular site the right hand side of the screen shows us the detail about that site. We can see its code repeated, and we're told it's visited every one day, so every day, Monday to Friday, and that the site is active, so it's currently commercially viable. We can see the machine that's held there, and the customer details, including their site address, which may be different to their invoicing address. We get a little bit of information on contacts, and when the machine was installed, and when it's due for removal. And there's some notes fields. Here at the bottom there's a panel showing all the visits to this site. The visit history can go back as far as you like. But what we're seeing here at the top is that of all the visits that have been done, two have yet to be logged. That may mean they're in the future. It's worth saying at this point, Operator 4 core product works with paper-based visit records, so it expects operators to take out printed worksheets, fill them in and bring them back. They're then keyed into Operator 4. But if you take the optional handheld module, then the operators can fill in the information while they're actually standing in front of the machine, and that will oper update Operator 4 live, and these details would not need to be rekeyed. OK, so that's a little bit about the Route tab. Now, noticing that we're on Abbey Cushions and Site SAB01, let's move on to the Customer tab. The Customer tab shows us a list of customers. You can see we're already highlighting Abbey Cushions. That's because Operator 4 is context sensitive. It knows what we're working on in each tab, so it tries to save key presses by moving to the right place for us. If I move back to the routes, move on to handheld hotel, and then move to customer, then again, Operator 4 has already put us on that record to save us time and trouble. However, I want to stick with Abbey Cushions, so I'll go back onto that. What we're seeing on the right hand side here is the detail on the customer Abbey Cushions. Instead of a site address this time, we're seeing the invoice address. And at the bottom we've got some information on contact detail. You can have as many contacts as you like set up with a customer. I'd like to take this opportunity to show you the button bar and the way in which we drill down into more sophisticated features. So I press customer here. I get the customer record with the information that we're looking at. But I can also, for example, access their charging profile. Here we can see whether they're charged by meter, by cash, by stock put into the machine, 
or any combination of those, including rebates. We can also see how periodic charging is set up for this customer. Now it's also worth saying, if you have different sites for a customer and they are charged differently, that's not a problem. What we're setting up here is just the default for this particular customer. So as sites are added, these are the figures that will be picked up. They can then be changed for any particular site. Operator 4 is very flexible on a site level. Let's close this customer screen. Move on to machines. Again, because we've been looking at Abbey Cushions, we're straight away onto the machine at Abbey Cushions. We can see here its make and model, the serial number, and items like the key code. We can also see any fault history to do with this particular site. I can drill into that and see detail on the fault. Here we can see that a report was made by Abbey Gun. It's currently open, so it hasn't been resolved. It's a machine fault, and this is a cut drop failure that Abby herself has attempted to resolve but can't can't do. Now here, someone at the the administration office may decide that this it warrants a visit today, and allocate one of the available engineers. That's used together with the listing system to allow us to see what faults are outstanding and what needs doing. Here's the Abbey Cushions fault. This list can be printed or it can be run on screen. Now this is the core Operator 4 fault reporting system we're looking at. There is also a full add-on servicing module which has far more comprehensive features. That is subject of a further video. So let's have a look at the machine screen. Let's finally look at the stock screen. Here we see all the stock list. Stock items can be highlighted. We can see their full description and also the conversion between the different ways in which stock is handled. We have buying amounts, stocking amounts and vending amounts. So in this particular case where we're looking at Fanta Fruit Twists we can see that we buy them as a pallet of 27 cases at a cost of £369 and some pence. Each case is made up of 24 vends, meaning that each vend works out at costing us a fraction over 57 pence. These figures are used both to set vending prices and to look at profitability of each site. Each stock item maintains its own figures. We also see down here that you have a history of where the stock item has been used. You can see which van it was moved from to which site and the quantity that was used. Mostly these will be visits to site but they can also involve transfer between vans and warehouses and of course incoming stock. So there you have a pricey of the tab side of Operator 4. Let me just give you a couple of ideas about the power behind the system. Let's start off with the day sheet mechanism. Day sheets are used to generate visits to sites based on their need. This can be on visit frequency or on regular day visits. If I pick a new day, I'll pick tomorrow. There are currently no visits scheduled. If I print the auto day sheet, operator 4 will go to look at all the sites in the system and decide, based on the criteria we've put in, which sites require visits tomorrow. We can see here it looked across 31 sites. No visits were generated. I think that's because none of them are due for a visit on a Saturday. OK, let's pick a different day. Let's pick Monday. Try again. Here we can see that it's looked through the 31 sites in this system again, and this time decided that 26 of them are due for visits on Monday. For five of them, Monday was not a correct day to visit. Here we see the sites set up. This can then be used either to print 
all the worksheets if you're working a manually operated system, or you can simply upload these to the handhelds. That's an automated one key press operation. And then the operators concerned, Kevin, Robert, and Steve, will simply see these visits appear on their handhelds ready for Monday's visits. Another powerful aspect of Operator 4 is the invoicing mechanism. If we tell Operator 4 we would like some invoices generated, we're given some choices. We can invoice just for one customer, across all customers, or do a single ad hoc invoice or credit note. I'm going to say I want to generate for all customers and that I want all charges up until today's date to be taken into account. That means all visits and all periodic charges. What we can see happening here is that it's visiting every customer, every site and generating all the invoices required. You may have caught that, it produced nearly 45 invoices in the period of a few seconds. What we're then given is an opportunity to check these prior to posting them. What we have is each invoice and or credit note generated for each and every site that the system came across that needed charging. When we click on a particular invoice we get to see what it's charging for. In this case very little in the case of movement, but there is a six monthly management charge due and a six monthly lease charge due. It's worked out those charges and this would then construct an invoice. That invoice will be number 11339. We can pass through all the various documents and when we're happy with them, we save. That has the effect of posting these invoices into the system and if the optional Sage 50 link is set up, posting to Sage as well. The full detail is recorded in Operator 4. What you choose to post through to the invoice is set up by the options screen. It can go all the way from just a periodic charge through to meter by meter, detail by detail invoicing. Whatever your customer expects from you. I hope this few minutes has given you some idea about the simplicity of use and the power that Operator 4 can, can provide. I hope you'll be interested to look at some of the other videos which will tackle the various aspects of Operator 4 in more detail and give you insight into how, they, how it works. But for now, thank you very much for watching this.